The Laplace transform is a generalization of the Fourier transform. And here's the equation for the transform. And it's exactly the same as the Fourier transform equation, except we've got s here instead of j omega. So for the Fourier transform, we simply had j omega in there, but now s is a complex number. It has a real part plus an imaginary part. So that's sigma plus j omega. And in graphical terms, we are used to and familiar with having a time domain signal, which uh, might look like this, having a Fourier transform, which has one, it's an equivalent representation, exact equivalent in terms of the parameter omega, um, which is the frequency. And so we're familiar with this one dimensional time domain signal into a one dimensional representation in terms of omega. And the difference now is for the Laplace transform, we still have the time domain signal, but it's a different transform. And now the variable s is a complex number, so it has a real part and an imaginary part. So now we can plot that and it's going to be on a two dimensional plane. So instead of having a one dimensional line with a function sitting above it, we now have a two dimensional plane and the function is going to sit above that two dimensional plane. And where we plotted omega horizontally here, we're now plotting omega on the vertical axis of our two dimensional surface that our function is going to live on top of. Uh, so it's two dimensional instead of one dimensional. Um, so if we, if we set s with a sigma equal to zero, then it, we get the Fourier transform. So in this plane here, if we simply set sigma equal to zero and we look along the vertical axis and we look above that, that will be the Fourier transform. Okay, let's do an example. So let's take a familiar example, xt equals e to the minus at ut for a which is real and positive. And this is a familiar um, function and we've taken the Fourier transform of this a number of times. So let's now see what this is in Laplace. Well, this is a step function, so it only exists for positive values of t. Uh, so and it's e to the minus at times e to the minus st dt, because the step function equals one over that range. And then this is equal to zero to infinity of e to the minus s plus a times t dt. And now we try to do this integral and we're going to, of course, get 1 over s plus a uh, with a minus out the front um, multiplied by e to the minus s plus a t evaluated between 0 and infinity. And so we can see we put infinity in here. If s plus a uh, so s plus a, let me just take one step here and expand this, s plus a equals sigma plus a plus j omega. This is the real part, this is the imaginary part. So e to the s plus a is e to the sigma plus a times e to the j omega. So e to the minus s plus a is e to the minus sigma plus a t with the t. Uh, times e to the minus j omega t. Okay, so this expression here is what these two, what this expression here is. We can write it, it this way. And now there's two parts. This part is the oscillating part. Let's not forget that this is cos of omega t plus j sine of omega t uh, minus with the minuses. Okay, so this is minus. Uh, and here, when we put infinity into here, well, this is always between minus 1 and 1. So this term here is always between minus 1 and 1, and this term here, then, is the one that's important. So if you put infinity into here, if sigma and a are both positive, then you are going to have a... When you put infinity in here, then you're going to have a function which is able to be... Uh, evaluated because it's mi it'll be minus infinity. If sigma plus a is negative, then you won't be able to evaluate it because it will be infinity. So the answer to this only exists for s plus a, uh, the real part of s plus a being positive. So the real part of s plus a needs to be positive. 
And what that means is that the real part of, when we look at this plot here, this is our S surface, the real part of S needs to be bigger than minus A. So let's look at where that is here. A was positive, so minus A is going to be over here. And the real part, which is on the horizontal axis, needs to be bigger than that. So this means there's a, an area of our surface of S where we can find the answer. On this side of our plane, we don't have the Fourier transform, uh, the Laplace transform defined. On this side of the plane, the Laplace transform is defined. And what we'll find is this is always going to be the case that these regions are vertical lines and you're either on one side of the vertical line or the other. It either exists or it doesn't exist for exactly this reason that the function here either goes to infinity, in which case it's not defined, or it goes negative infinity, which means it goes to zero, which means that the, um, it is defined. So these are called region of convergence. In this case, the region of convergence is on the right-hand side of that vertical line for this example.